Hello and welcome to Microsoft Virtual Academy and our course today, Introduction to Active Directory. My name is Christopher Chapman. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer and IT Planner in the Product Development Group here at Microsoft in Microsoft Learning, working on server and system center technologies. Today we're going to discuss Active Directory and its role, well various roles I guess is a better way to put it, in the IT realm. My background, I'm an IT pro with background in help desk, support, network administration, systems administration, and then gradually moved into projects and project management. I've done work in SharePoint, Exchange, Active Directory as it pertains to today especially, migrations from other products, centralization of non-managed networks, various projects across the IT portfolio. My contact information is on this slide right here. Feel free to send me emails with any questions after today. I can't promise a, a specific response time, but hopefully I will be able to get back to you in a reasonable amount of time. You can also find me on Twitter here at the bottom at ChristopherMSL. Today we're going to cover the roles of Active Directory and how each of them works, what they do, what they provide, and in some cases how they interact. We'll go over a quick introduction of each of these roles. Really it is what they are and what they do. And then we'll dive into each one a little bit deeper in an individual module per role. Domain services, certificate services, federation services, rights management services, and finally, lightweight directory services. Our target audience for this is any IT professionals interested in potentially gaining more knowledge. We also have a target here for people new to IT, new to technology, new to Active Directory, or even already in an IT role in a help desk or support uh, position, looking to move into something bigger, better, faster, and more. Suggested prerequisites, the Microsoft Technology Associate Track is a terrific track for people who are new to technology or new specifically to Microsoft Technologies, who would like to move into going through some courses, getting some certifications as first steps into further knowledge in an IT career. Our Windows Operating System Fundamentals, Server Administration Fundamentals, and Network and Security Fundamental courses are great starting points for really any IT career in progress or future. We're going to jump right in. Introduction. This again is an overview of those five roles provided by Active Directory, and then we'll cover those in more details in subsequent modules later today. Active Directory isn't what it used to be. I put this up here as a reminder to myself. Still, people to this day use the term Active Directory to define what is Active Directory domain services. What used to be Active Directory was that one specific service. The centralized management of users and computers across your IT organization using the tools provided when the technology was introduced. It has changed and Active Directory now, as a definition, is a portfolio of technologies. It is a collection of services, server roles, and features used to manage identity and access for and to resources on a network. The five roles are covered here. Domain, Federation, Rights Management, Lightweight Directory, and Certificate, with some brief descriptions of what they provide. Active Directory being the overarching technology definition for all of them, tying them all together, in some cases directly, and in others merely complementary, in a complementary fashion. Active Directory Domain Services, users, computers, and policies. This is what we're going to manage. This is what we're going to be working with in this role. Active Directory Certificate Services, Service Client Server and User Identification, Verification of Identification, and in some cases, slightly more advanced security topics, non-repudiation, verification of contents. We may not cover those in great detail today, but it's what's provided. Federation Services, Resource Access Across Traditional Boundaries, the allowing of resources in my organization to be accessed by security principals in other organizations without needing some of the traditional trust mechanisms. AD Rights Management Services, a way for me to maintain the security of the data in my organization, both within and outside of that organization. And Lightweight Directory Services, I don't have a description here only because it really is just a copy of the structure of Active Directory Domain Services, and we'll cover that later in subsequent modules. What is the first one, Active Directory Domain Services? This is potentially the biggest 
I don't know if I'd call it most important, but most prolific role in the Active Directory suite. A directory service is both the directory information source and the service that makes the information available and usable. In this case, information about servers, users, clients, network devices, applications, and in this case, I specified email servers because there's a very close tie to Active Directory and Exchange in the Microsoft portfolio. This information is both about and provided to each of these categories by Active Directory Domain Services. Manageability, security, and interoperability all provided in a centralized, much more easily managed method than without this technology. Scalable, secure, and manageable infrastructure for user and resource management. It is all of those things in one package. This is why we use Active Directory Domain Services. It lets me manage essentially as many objects, users, computers, printers, shares, as I can cram into it, given that I have the hardware to support it, in a centralized manner, all from a single console, potentially. It also allows me, however, to delegate that administration out to other administrators in my organization. It stores and manages information about network resources. In the previous slide we saw servers, clients, users, network applications, various pieces of information. It provides support for directory enabled applications such as Microsoft Exchange Server. In this case, there is a direct connection to Active Directory by Exchange Server. And it allows for centralized management and then the delegation of that centralized management out to other potential business units or administrators. Active Directory Certificate Services is the Microsoft implementation of public key infrastructure. And I felt like putting the definition of that on here because I didn't want to just leave it at that. PKI is a set of hardware, software, people, policies, and procedures needed to create, manage, distribute, use, store, and revoke digital certificates. I like that mouthful of information. We're actually going to go into great detail about all of those things in the specific module related to Active Directory Certificate Services. End user entities, users or computers, certificate stores, responsible for repositories and revocation, requests, certificate retrieval, and certificate revocation are all bits and pieces of the ADCS story. We're gonna cover each of these pieces in more detail in the future as well. What does it do? It provides customizable services for issuing and managing digital certificates. At the end of the day, certificate services, I hate to oversimplify, just does one thing. And this is it. Issues and manages certificates. It's that simple. It does this in a number of different ways and with a number of different tools. All of the tools listed here, certification authorities, uh, certification web enrollment, online responders, network device enrollment services, certificate enrollment web service, and the certificate enrollment policy web service are all the pieces used to manage those certificates they're issuing in their management. Active Directory Federation Services, a software component that facilitates the cross-organizational access of systems and applications. This lets me as an IT administrator either share my resources out to the world or let my users access resources in someone else's organization, depending on which side of this equation I happen to be on. It provides simplified, secured identity federation and web single sign-on capabilities. The real beauty of federation services, there are other ways to do this built into Microsoft technology. What FS lets us do is make it seamless. I log in once, that's all I have to do. I access an application via the web, that application is actually going to use my credentials in my organization to authenticate and authorize me into that application in another organization. Enables the creation of trust relationships, provides access to applications, and provides single sign-on between two different directories for web-based applications. ADRMS, Rights Management Services, is an information protection technology. It works with applications to safeguard our digital information. What this allows for if I'm an author, it allows me to create content as simple as a Word document or even an email. It allows me to protect that Word document or email using those, in this case, ADRMS-aware applications, Word or Outlook. It lets me set 
what can be done with that data after it's been created. I type up my Word document, I type up my email, I tell that application, protect this document and don't let somebody do something with it. Print it, copy it, forward it on to another mail recipient if it's an email in particular. And then that protection follows that document anywhere. The recipient of that information having access to my RMS infrastructure through various means, both public and private, will be able to verify that that document is indeed accessible to them, but then again be restricted with what they can do with it. Allows individuals and administrators to specify access permissions to documents, workbooks, and presentations. I, it's not necessarily limited to just these three pieces of information. Again, I mentioned emails. You can expand this out to other bits of data. Prevent sensitive information from being printed, forwarded, or copied by unauthorized people. Access and usage restrictions are enforced no matter where the information is located. If I create a Word document, I protect it with RMS, I email it to someone outside of Microsoft or outside of my organization, they are still subject to the restrictions of that document. And even then, given that they can access the RMS infrastructure through some other means in the first place. Our last one, Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services, is essentially Active Directory Domain Services in an empty shell template form. It's both the directory information source and the service that makes it available and usable. This is the same definition we used earlier in ADDS. Same options, except without a couple of the key pieces that ADDS provides. Windows users, network devices, applications, and email servers. I can use Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services to store, replicate, access information, the same information that I could track in Active Directory Domain Services, names, locations, uh, application information specific to that application. I can use ADLDS to access and use that information. Directory Service provides flexible support for directory enabled applications without the dependencies and domain related restrictions of ADDS. Active Directory Domain Services is a management tool for an organization. It comes with the overhead of that requirement. It's a management tool. Lightweight Directory Services is merely an information store, but it is a structured information store based on the structure of ADDS. Provide directory services for directory enabled applications without incurring the overhead of domains and forests. No requirement for a single schema throughout a forest. I can customize ADLDS as much as I'd like. Thank you for sticking around. That's the end of our first module. We're going to be back in a few minutes to talk about these technologies in greater depth and go into them in more detail.